I grew up in a nice Jewish household in Haddonfield, New Jersey. Many of you don't know what it's like to grow up in a Jewish household. You, for example. I picked the most Gentile-looking person I possibly can find. I was going to go with you, but I went with him. My mother's brother was a doctor. That automatically made my mother a doctor, and she wanted me to be a doctor. But I wanted to be a business guy like my dad. We lived on the busiest street in town in Haddonfield, Kings Highway and Choose Landing Road, and we got a puppy. And the puppy and I would go to the door to get the newspaper back in the days when they had newspapers. Uh, with the death of newspapers, puppies will have no place to pee. And one morning, the dog got out and runs right for the street, and I go chase my dog. You ever try to chase a dog? So I run for four blocks, and I can't get the dog. And I run back to the house, and I'm like panting, Dad, this dog's gone, we gotta get... And my father was always very calm. He goes, okay, son, we'll get in the car, we'll find the dog. I run, I, I spun around to run to get the dog, and I take one step, and I trip over the dog. <laughs> as soon as I started to run the other way, the dog chased me. Chasing your customers too hard, some of them running away from you, some of them not returning your call, some of them go dark after you send a proposal or after you've had that unbelievable meeting, oh, this guy's the greatest guy in the world, and then you leave 28 voicemail messages and there's no return phone call, who has ever had that happen? Raise your hand. Exactly. Piss me off, those customers. So, um, how many of you are from New York? Not like bullshit New York, like real New York. <laughs> yeah, I'm from Albany. Oh, great. <laughs> Can I have a slide? Here we go. This is, New York City is paradise. I took this out of our apartment window. Isn't that cool? This is the most magnificent, but I don't want to talk about, well, let's talk a little bit about New York. It's warm, touristy, crowded, trafficy, and overpriced. And if you've ever made a cold call here, up yours is a greeting. <laughs> but let's talk about sales paradise. What happens there? Hmm? Anybody know? Oh, of course you know. Everybody meets with you, tells you the truth, takes your call, returns your call, allows you to give them a contract and proposal, and you win every sale and proposal at full price. That's bullshit, right? Let's talk about the reality of sales. The reality of sales is four things. The first one's price. What do you think the second one is? This would be the audience participation part of the talk. The second one is competition. You all have competition, don't you? How many of you wish your competitors would just die? Raise your hand, dead. What are, the, what are the rest of you, from Kansas or something? Well, there's plenty of room for it. No, there isn't. The third is value. No perceived value. Then all you got left is price. And the fourth is trust. If I don't trust you, I'm not going to come near you. How many of you have ever gotten a price rejection? Raise your hand. How many of you have ever lost? Why do you lose a sale to price? Tell me that. No, no. You lose a sale to price because you suck at sales. <laughs> Any questions on this? <laughs> it's the relationship, not the price, isn't it? And the root word of relationship is the word relate. If you can't relate to the other person, you're never going to get them to buy from you. The price is in your mind more than it's in theirs. Girls, if you have ever gone to a department store and you have a $150 budget for a dress and you see a dress that you love for $300, what do you do? You buy the dress. That's exactly right. Price means nothing. Now, I'm going to start with the great myths of selling. Your manager thinks you're on a team. That is such bullshit. You don't want to be on a team. You want the guy next to you to die so you can have his book of business, correct? <laughs> hey, if Bob dies, can I have his uh, customer? <laughs> <laughs> I 
my product is becoming a commodity. How many of you sell pigs or oil? <laughs> Those are commodities. Everything else has a value. I don't really need social media. I'm on LinkedIn. That's enough. And a bonus myth, my customers love me. <laughs> Dude, you're either online or you're going to lose to somebody who is. If there are men and women in the decision-making process, play to the man. Reality, if there's men and women in the decision-making process, men decide nothing. Think of your marriage, men. <laughs> When's the last time you made a major decision? You go to the car place and you go, I, honey, how do you like this blue car? I want white. White, okay, white, okay, and done. If I can get in front of the decision maker, I can close the sale 90% of the time. <laughs> I, if you do that, please come work for me. I'll double your salary. And finally, committees make decisions. No, committees make a decision, and then they go ask their daddy if they can buy it. Daddy, can we get this stuff, Daddy? They, they said they're the market leader, Daddy. I don't know what that means, Daddy, but it's pretty good. And, and the boss says, ah, we don't like them. Over. Over. All right. Any questions so far? No, good. I hate questions. I give opportunities to learn. So this is not really a seminar. I'm not going to change the world, but I can help change your world. Which do you think is more important, the world or your world? Yeah, stop watching other people's drama and start concentrating on doubling your business. If what you're watching on television won't double your sales, turn it off. It's a waste of your time and your life. And my slides are not available. Can I have your slides? No, they're my slides. Can I have your television? So take out your smartphone. How many of you still have a BlackBerry? <laughs> well, I miss my BlackBerry. No, you don't. BlackBerry sat on their ass, and Steve Jobs cleaned their clock. Only about 98% of their business, not all of it. They still have 2% left. So take out your photo, take out your smartphone, and take a photo of any slide you want or video, whatever you want to do. But afterwards, over, I'm going home. Cool? Actually, I'll be out there selling stuff. Uh-oh. So here's the secret of my success. I'm New York City disruptive, personally. I, always, I started out cold calling in New York City in the 70s and still make sales in New York City to this day. This is the epicenter of selling. If you can sell it here, you can sell it anywhere. My sales perspective, hopefully your sales perspective, flies in the face of traditional selling. See all this stuff, cold calling, find the pain, pitch the product, close the sale, customer satisfaction, over. Well, actually, it's uh, bullshit. Anyone who teaches you to find the pain, punch them in the face with a shovel. <laughs> my pain is none of your business, but my pleasure Ah, now you're talking about something. So this is what I do, and this is going to be in my book, The New Sale. It will be, add red to slides, Hello. value attraction, social attraction, find the pleasure, ask emotional questions, discover the motive to buy, confirm the urgency of the author, of the offer, give after the sale value, earn customer loyalty, and earn referrals. That's the new sale. Take a picture of that, because you're not going to see it anywhere else till the book comes out. Oh, sorry, but honey, there's, no, oh, there's poles in your way on that one? Oh my God, it's horrible. And you can't just know the elements, you better master the elements, or you'll lose to someone who's mastered them. Personally, I don't make goals. I commit and I achieve, that's it. I figure out what I want to do, I don't write them in the back of a little book, I put them on my bathroom mirror, where I see them every day, twice a day. Not everyone will agree with my philosophies or strategies, but nobody can say that I don't work my ass off and let people say exactly the same thing about you. Great guy, works his ass off. Great woman, works her ass off. That's part of the respect factor. 
The key is daily training. 10 minutes a day, 15 minutes a day, every athlete does it, even in the off season. You wake up in the morning, you train. You don't wake up in the morning, drink a cup of coffee, take a shower and go to work and get there, quote, on time. That's over. Second best person in selling is the first loser. You commit to be your best. No one ever remembers who comes in second place, ever. And this is the only place you'll ever learn why people buy, not how to sell. How to sell is over. Why people buy is the, is the new black. You move ahead to the internet, business, social media, service that rocks, and a sincere appreciation for business, a thank you. You move ahead to relationships, value, referrals, and loyalty. This is where the new sale takes place. Relationships, value, referrals, and loyalty. So these are the skills you gotta master, and then I gotta go. The consistency of a yes attitude. The, re the difference between yes attitude and positive attitude is when something great happens to you, you don't scream positive. When something great happens to you, you scream yes. And it doesn't have to be yes, it has to be like a yes phrase where I'm sitting around having breakfast with a couple of my granddaughters and daughter. I know I don't look old enough to have grandchildren, but I do. And Morgan, the eight, the eight was eight at the time, and the, all our food comes, and the first thing she does is she spills her drink all over everything. And she goes like this, first spill of the day. <laughs> That's a yes attitude. And I take pictures for Instagram at the conferences that I go to, and then I post them up on Instagram, and I get 195 likes. What are you doing on Instagram that is building your reputation? I'll give you the answer, not enough. How many of you have an Instagram account that goes business and personal? Raise your hand high. How many of you don't have an Instagram account? That Raise your hand if you don't have an Instagram account. This is audience participation. What could you be thinking? Oh, there's only a few hundred million people. You want to wait until it catches on. <laughs> the definition of a positive attitude came from Earl Nightingale in 1958, the way you dedicate yourself to the way you think. You become what you think about all day long. More complex definition is about resilience, the way you react, respond, and recover from what happens to you, what is done to you, or what is said to you. Your response. Number two is the depth of your belief. Your belief drives the foundation and transferability of your enthusiasm and your attitude. It is a reflection of you, most important person in the world. You gotta believe you work for the greatest company in the world. You gotta believe you make the best products and services in the world. You gotta believe you're the greatest person in the world. If you don't have these three beliefs, quit now, get out of the post office, get yourself a nice safe job down there selling stamps. It's real easy, people line up, they go, 100 stamps please. You go, stamps, just made a sale, hey, stamps. The fourth part is you have, to, you have to believe that you can differentiate yourself from your competition, not compare yourself to your competition. Compare is price, differentiate is value. And the fifth, and I think the most powerful part of the process, is you have to believe that the customer is better off having purchased from you. And you cannot believe this in your head, you have to believe it in your heart. Head is attached to price. Heart is attached to wallet. Jerk on the heartstring, wallet comes popping right out of that back pocket. You don't look like you get it. How many of you have a young kid? What's their closing ratio? <laughs> Got it? In 1938, Napoleon Hill said, whatever the mind can conceive and believe it can achieve, and it is still true today. You have to have a firm understanding of value. Differentiate from rather than compare to, that's value. And value to you may not be value to them. People focus on content marketing. It is the biggest bunch of crap I've ever seen in my life. It's value message posting. 
If your content has no value, I don't care about it. And I want it to be valuable to me, not valuable to you. Perceived value, not added value. Well, this is our value add. What the hell is that? Oh, you mean if I buy shit from you, you'll give me something else. No, that's not what I want. I want value first. I give value first. My whole marketing philosophy is I put myself in front of people that could say yes to me, and I deliver value first. How many of you own my books? Raise your hand. See what I mean? Give me an idea when you come into a meeting with me, not a brochure. I don't want your brochure. I shred your brochure. Everyone shreds your brochure. I don't want a sales pitch. I've already heard it. Well, how's it going with you? Uh-huh. Well, what do you got on the burner? Uh-huh. <laughs> what keeps you up at night? <laughs> Seriously? Number four is your ability to, to attract, engage, and connect. And this is online and in person. Both socially and face-to-face. This is my address. This is where you can find me. How many people have, on LinkedIn, how many people have more than 500 followers? How many people don't have 500 followers? That's where you start. Start there. You're not there, you're not, you know, I have 248 followers. Right, you're nobody. How many people have more than 1,000? How many people have more than 5,000? How many people have more than 10,000? How many people have more than 20,000? Let's see, there's me and two other guys. You, you have to build your network from LinkedIn out. Because LinkedIn will tell you everything you need to know about somebody. They brag all their crap is right on LinkedIn. Everything they've done. But from there, you have to engage them. And you can't, you can't troll LinkedIn for leads. You find people that have potential value to you and you figure out a way to get involved with them with value. And the reality is, when you come visit me, I'm going to Google you. Salespeople have always thought they're invisible. That's a bunch of crap. I'm going to Google you, I'm going to LinkedIn you, I'm going to Facebook you, I'm going to tweet you, I'm going to Twitter you, I'm going to look and see if you have a YouTube channel, I'm going to see if you have a website, I'm going to see if you're on this. I can do that in one minute. And you're going to come in and go, well, let me tell you a little bit about me. Dude, I know about you. Tell me something about me that I don't know. That's the new way to sell. You walk in prepared in terms of them, not in terms of you. You don't count anymore. I don't care if you die. I don't care if you drop dead right in the middle of your presentation. Because there's somebody out in the lobby just like you waiting to go next. <laughs> oh, look at that. The salesman died. Look at that. <laughs> Your ability to ask an emotional question. If you're selling real estate, anybody sell real estate? People in real estate already know everything. So this is just going to be a review. <laughs> and they say, well, uh, do you have a home to sell? Do you have a mortgage? Uh -huh. What's your payment right now? What kind of a home are you looking to buy? How much? What's your budget? Thank you. <laughs> Next. Why don't you just say, tell me about the bedroom that you grew up in. Why don't you make it emotional? Hmm? Exactly. I can make you cry. Here's a couple of emotional-based questions. I ask people where they grew up. Not where you're from. Where did you grow up? Because that will tell me a lot of things about you, but it also tells you about you. Immediately, you're, it may be 50 years since you've been there, or 20 years since you've been there, but you remember your siblings, your, your parents, if they're still alive, the house where you were, it's emotional. And I have you emotionally tagged immediately. The second most powerful is when I say blank, what one word comes to mind? When I say copiers, Mr. Jones, what one word comes to mind? Lousy service. Oh, that's two words. I was hoping for one. But what do I know? I know I have an opening because this guy's getting lousy service with who he's got. He gives me top of mind and attitude towards it with that one question. Fill in that blank with anything you want. And it's most likely that your presentation skills suck. 
Most likely. Have you ever seen yourself on film? That's a hoot, isn't it? Why don't you just film yourself singing karaoke? Sober. But you don't understand, I don't give presentations. This is a performance. The same with karaoke, it's a performance. It's not a presentation. Let me present this song to you. And girls, singing in a group doesn't count as karaoke. You either sing by yourself or out. <laughs> Come on everybody, let's sing that B-52 song, Love Shack. <laughs> I hate that song. When you give a performance, your goal is to transfer the message. The customer or the audience has to say, I get it, I agree with it, I think I can do it, I'm willing to try it, or I'm willing to buy it. That's how you, that's how you know your message is transferred. Transferability is 1,000% easier when you employ testimonials and voice of customer, 1,000%. Your voice pales by comparison to your customer's voice. When you say it about yourself, it's bragging. When your customer says it about you, it's proof. And your customer's the only proof you got. Yeah, we're the greatest. No, no, they are the greatest. Check it out. Oh, we're dimming the lights. Wow, how cool is this? Very nice, guys. Jeffrey Gittimer, I mean, wow, you know? It's an experience I'll never forget. It has exceeded my expectations. Absolutely spectacular. Gittimer is probably what I would call a generation ahead of most of the sales trainers I've dealt with. I decided that I want to have fun the rest of my life, and I want to have fun doing what I do best, which is helping people eat better and eat better food. So I came here to get a kick in the ass from Jeffrey to make sure that for the rest of my career, I get the most out of it. Over. And I have come okay, away with things that I... Okay, now that's 30 seconds, six testimonials. The people who we filmed went on and on and on, but we took the film back to our studio and did something called edit. <laughs> and you can do exactly the same thing. But proof is the new close. Why are you, why am I, these are the five best ways to close the sale. Seriously? Let me give you the one best way. Let your customer speak for you over, you don't need to know the sharp angle. Well, does it come in green? Would you like it in green? Is green the color you're looking for? Because uh, I'm trying to close you. Outcome is the new measurement. I'm, I'm girly. I shop for clothes at John Barbados. You know John Barbados? He's like a clothier, only more expensive. So I'm in the Soho store, and I buy this shirt. And I go, I avoid the New York City tax, can you ship it to Charlotte? And they go, oh, sure, we can ship it, no problem, Mr. Gittimer. That arrives. <laughs> How's your delivery doing, huh? Ever screw up a delivery? Ever get it wrong? Ever back order something? Ever have the customer not get what they ordered and call up and complain about it, huh? What's the value of this to John Barbados who won't take my call? To my 111,000 Twitter followers. <laughs> you take calls these days, you don't take a chance. Outcome, what happens after the customer takes ownership? You have to provide service that comes from your heart. Heart is the essence of service. This is the coffee cup of New York City from the 40s. They still do them in Greek diners. Eight ounce coffee cup. Isn't it cool though? We are happy to serve you. I love that. It's the first positive thing New York City ever did. But it's an uphill thing. We, you know, people are out in the street protesting. Is that the guy you're going to hire? Huh? Is it? You might want to tell him to go get a job. Boop. Boop. Service is a person, not a policy. 
If anyone ever quotes their policy to me, I say, oh, I have a policy. I hang up on people that say the word policy to me. <laughs> Over. The word policy always indicates something negative is about to follow, correct? 5,000-year-old Chinese proverb, to serve is to rule. Ever fly on an airplane and get lousy service? Eh? I used to fly U.S. Airways, now I fly American because two shitty airlines got together to form a huge shitty airline. <laughs> you know their slogan, right? We're not satisfied until you're not satisfied. <laughs> it's not satisfaction, it's loyalty. You want to know the difference? Uh, raise your hand if you're married. Would you rather your spouse be satisfied or loyal? <laughs> Got it? Oh, look at my little granddaughters. God, I sure hope they get to go to college. You can help. <laughs> a genuine desire to build a friendship and a relationship. All things being equal, people want to do business with their friends. All things being not quite so equal, people still want to do business with their friends. Daughter, granddaughter. Daughter on the left. All my grandchildren are older than my youngest daughter. They come over to visit their aunt. It's the relationship, not the... Why don't you think about the five customers you wish you had? The reason you don't got them, somebody else has a better relationship with them than you do. And you better know the difference between blame and responsibility. A loss of sale. Guy wouldn't return my phone call. I couldn't get to the decision maker. Blame, 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 any blame, blame. You can't blame other people. It's not going to win. Guy wouldn't return my call. Oh, let me explain why. The message you left them sucked. Any questions on that? I'm calling about the proposal. And I was wondering if you had any questions. You don't care if they had any questions, you just want the money, right? Hi, I'm calling about the money. Is it ready? <laughs> At least you're being honest. <laughs> just take responsibility. There's been one new objection in 100 years. Anybody know what it is? I can get it cheaper online. That's the only new objection in sales. All the rest are 100 years old or more. So if you know what they are, why don't you figure out how to overcome them before you walk into the meeting? Why don't you say, a price is too high? Uh, I've never heard that before. Why don't you try that one? I refer to them as barriers. Barriers can be overcome or prevented by taking responsibility for your preparation, your words, your deeds, and your action. Responsibility. And finally, Think and act responsibly. I'm going to give you the new ways of thinking and acting responsibly, and then I'm going to go. I'm going to uncover my customers' intentions and motives for purchase, their why. Click that. Why they buy is a thousand times more powerful than how to sell. I'm going to share with him or her how they can produce more and profit more after the purchase, their outcome. I'm going to get several of my customers to do video testimonials. Boom, I'm gonna prove my value. And if you can do that, you're gonna win. The trust, the sale, the referral, the relationship, all of them are earned. You earn it, you don't ask for it. So there you go. New sale, it'll be out in six months or so, but uh, you can get around the corner uh, on our online training program because I'm not allowed to sell from the platform. So, first thing you do when you implement, when you go home from this conference, the first thing you're going to do is ask yourself a question. Who do I need to become to attract who I want and what I want? Make all decisions based on the person you want to become. Then they're long-term decisions, not end-of-the-month decisions. I don't think end-of-month. I think end-of-time. Record your notes. Make yourself a podcast. Post your goals on your bathroom mirror. Well, Jeffrey, my wife won't let me put anything up on the bathroom mirror. Get rid of her. <laughs> Record your presentations. It's the funniest thing you've ever heard, you trying to make a sale. First class, you want to know what first class is? This is a first class meeting. 
in a first-class place run by first-class people and a first-class organization. When you go home, what they're trying to tell you here is go home and be first-class. When someone talks about you behind your back, let them say first-class guy, first-class woman. I transfer happiness very easily. I make 10 people smile and do a random act of kindness every day. And I don't do random acts of kindness for other people. I do them for myself. It makes me feel good. And when I make somebody else smile, it makes me smile. Now, I've just made almost 1,000 people smile. I can piss people off for a month. I'm still ahead of my goal. <laughs> and you be a lifelong lover. You love yourself first. Pop it. You don't have to need to lower the lights. Just play it. Song, sound, sound on laptop. Mm hmm Sound. Is there any sound? Do -do -do -do. Anyway, Gabrielle's dancing while she's trying on clothes. I wonder if this is how you try on clothes. <laughs> I doubt it. Love what you do. Love to serve. Love the journey. Love to learn. Look at that Instagram post. Is that cool or what? It's just beautiful graphic. Love that. Anyway, go around the corner. We have a deal. And another deal. My learning academy is going to be the classiest learning academy on the planet. We've partnered with somebody finally who gets it. And as this thing evolves, it, it will be killer, not just for you, but for your people. Ooh, ooh. You love your family, you take care of your family. I take care of mine. I have four daughters, four granddaughters, and a girlfriend. All girls, all the time. Girls rule. Men follow. My 65th birthday was a surprise party at baggage claim. That's part of my life. There's all the girls. They grow up very quickly. My dad said, look at that protected little babies, huh? Look at this little kid. She's giving me the finger. <laughs> I'm teaching her to be a Phillies fan. My dad said, son, days and weeks go very slowly. Years fly by. Boom. Boom. Same shorts. Same shorts. and make sure they root for the right team. I'm a follower of Dale Carnegie and all other thinkers. He wrote two of the most important books in our society, How to Win Friends and Influence People, How to Stop Worrying and Start Living, because they have a secret thread that runs through both books, The Secret of Life. Be yourself. Be yourself. Now, I wonder, when you see a puddle outside today, I wonder if you're going to avoid it or splash in it. I wonder. Well, here's the deal. The puddle's over because she can see herself in the window. <laughs> and I wonder, when you see something in the window, is this how you react to it, or do you just kind of walk by? Here's what to do. Splash in a puddle. Dance in public. Dare to be yourself. My name is Jeffrey Gittimer. I give value first. I help other people. I strive to be my best at what I love to do. I establish long-term relationships with everyone. And I have fun. And I do that every day. And I found out a secret. When you love what you do, all of your days are the same. They're holidays, baby. And I wish the same for you. Thanks for being my customer this morning. Thank you.